Welcome back to Zero Tolerance, episode six, Learn to Burn with Practical Machinist. Today the question is, to burn or not to burn? That is the question. We're here at the shop and we're going to talk about whether we're gonna burn or not burn uh, certain areas. The typical way it goes in the shop is you have uh, blocks that go to heat treat, they come back from heat treat, and then we will cut as much as possible and burn or EDM as little as possible. Most of the time this is the case, um, mostly for speed, uh, cost, or so we think. In some instances, it may be more beneficial to actually burn more of the job than to try to get very small cutters and use your, your Makinos or your high speed machines to do that fine finish cutting. When in this case, we have, we have a, an actual example of, of a job where we actually finished cut a lot of it and then we had to set the blocks up in the EDM because there was one spot we had to burn no matter what. And it ended up being where, looking back at the job, we would have put more work into the electrodes and made more electrodes and, and, and did a lot more or a lot less hard milling. Um, that's very, that's very controversial. Most places won't allow you to do that. They said, if you can cut it, cut it. Uh, but today in, in the, the, the high pace, um, the fast pace, trying to cut costs, trying to make things better uh, for your customers with speed and efficiency, it makes sense to burn more on, in, some, in some instances, more than you'd think. For wire EDM, wire EDM you can see a lot more advantage uh, for doing uh, some complicated features that can be running in the EDM overnight, uh, unmanned, and very high accuracy it can be attained that way. Uh, for sinker, a lot of people think, yes, you should just cut it, hard mill it, hard mill it, hard mill it, and that, that's the way to go. But I'm here to show you that there is other ways. You can actually do a lot more work uh, safely with less risk, and in the same time frame, free up machines that can be milling other things while your EDM and your trode machines are cutting and burning electrodes. Here's the block that I wanted to talk about. This is the job we're, we're working on currently. This whole job was hard milled. It's like 48 to 52 Rockwell. And as you can see, it's all cut. There's only one spot where we really had to do, um, right here, we had to actually burn this area down here because uh, it had some sharp corners at the bottom and in the, in the sides. Looking back at the job, there was a lot of time spent, very small cutters went in around this profile and down in these grooves. And it took a long time. Um, but what we could have done is made a couple more electrodes, covered more area, and it would have freed this block out of the machine a day earlier. And actually our trode machine and um, our EDM sinker and our CNC trode machine would have, was open at the time. So, and we had other blocks that needed to go in the, the C and C or our Makino to get it cut. So we, we, looking back, we would have done it differently. And that, that just goes to show you there's, there's a different way to look at being efficient. You can be efficient and making one particular detail super efficient, our tool path super efficient. In my mind, I look at more work, like how much of the, how much of the work do you have? And then can you spread that work across multiple machines and, and actually get more traction. It may be a slower process, but you'll gain over the, over the course of, of a couple days or a week, you'll get more done. Um, and so, typically you may, you may get it done with more accuracy, uh, less, less risk. And what I mean by risk is if I have small cutters in this detail and I end up breaking them or, or something happens with my tool path where the cutter gets dull and it flexes and makes a, a gouge into the part, then I've got to weld it and now I'm going backwards. Where if I was to cut an electrode, I can check the electrode before we burn it and dimensionally check it as well. And then when it goes in and it does, I do the sinker work, I know that it's gonna be good. So that, that actually helps you reduce the risk and, and, and accomplish the job at the same time. Okay, here we wanna, I wanna show you this file um, that we're talking about out there. Um, this is the cavity, I'm sorry, this is the core of that job and all this little area that we're looking at is all cuttable except for this one spot right here and I'm gonna make this transparent so we can kind of see what I'm talking about it's this feature of our part that we're making 
the mold for. Uh, this has to be burned and looking back at it we had to make very put very small cutters in here and finish all this detail when it would have been more efficient for us in our our scenario to make an electrode more electrodes because we already had to set it up in the EDM so this would have made more sense to make more electrodes in this case we didn't do that um, but every time we do jobs like this we see a different way to uh, look at it to try to make it make more sense for us um, and, and pick up an efficiency that we didn't have before. One other thing to talk about here is that this uh, part may require a bench or uh, like a 320 paper finish or a lot of times when we do uh, this work we have to actually put an EDM finish on the part. So that actually drives some of our electrode uh, creation also is if the geometry is requiring like a, a slight texture to it, then we actually put that in with an electrode and it works very well for the customer, it's less expensive for them, um, and it, it keeps us moving, um, getting the job done. So I, it all depends also on how, what kind of finish you need. So that's a, a good point to bring up when we're looking at this kind of work. Okay, I wanna show this larger part as well. Not only does it make sense when there's small features that you're trying to cut, um, hard mill but also when you have a larger area it sometimes makes sense to do that also with having a, um, a large electrodes so this whole part you can see is done with this big electrode I had to go in there anyway for this real sharp edge so we ended up making an electrode to cut this whole thing and it made a lot of sense to do it and it saved us time not always does this make sense but in this particular case it did um, the other factor on this is they needed a, an EDM texture, which this is another good reason for doing it as well. All right, so here we're at the wire machine. I, I have a very cool example of a job that required both wire and sinker work and milling work. Um, the way that we process this job um, is not conventional to a lot of older tool shops or older, older tool makers. Um, and, I, and I'm one of the older tool makers, so I, I sometimes miss good ways of doing things. And um, our guy here, uh, Brandon, that does our programming, he came up with this solution of mounting this on a uh, 3R system to where we could put it in our 5-axis, do all the milling, take it to heat treat, get it back, do the hard milling, just the hard milling we need to, and then actually make electrodes and burn it all in one spot, in one block, I'm sorry. And then also set this up in the wire machine and then put all fast holes and then all the profiles this makes 36 inserts and it, it's gonna it saved us a ton of time and a ton of setups um, even though the process take took a long time it was a lot of unmanned hours that made this job super efficient so that's a great example of of what i'm of what i'm talking about here All right, I do want to talk about the wire EDM a little bit more. Um, this, this is a, a block that does four, it's actually eight pockets. And typically when you're doing wire at work, you, you do a, a fast hole and then you wire a profile with a tab and then you wire that tab off and you pull the slug out. Um, that is typically how most wire work gets done and you gotta be here when, it, when you pull that slug out, when you cut that off, usually got to stop it before it falls off and hits the heads. So this isn't a good example of what being like my, my, I guess my interpretation of what being efficient is. So this machine would have been sitting all night tonight. And what we set up here, if you look at the screen is we set up a pocketing routine for these, these, uh, these pockets that we're, we're wiring out for some inserts. Typically, this is a large waste of time. You don't usually want to do this, um, but we're doing it here because it's it's a it's it's unmanned hours. It's going to cost us more in wire. Uh, it's going to cost us more in electricity. But it's also we're not paying someone to stand here and wait for this to get done. When we come in in the morning, we're going to have eight pockets that are completely done. They're going to all be within tenths of each other, 
and, and then the inserts can be fit in this process. So if you look in here, this is gonna run um, all night long. So I, I, I think, it, from my perspective, that makes sense to do. Uh, some places don't believe in doing that or don't trust running their machines at night um, either. I, I, I believe that the new technology, the way you can monitor this stuff with like industry 4.0 stuff, I can look on my phone and see if the machine stopped. And sometimes I look too often, I have to come up to the shop and actually turn the machine back on because a wire broke or something like that. But that's just a good example of what I feel to be uh, keeping the, the work moving, even though it's a slower operation. Okay, here I want to talk about the, the pros and cons of, of milling. Um, the pros are, it, it's, you, it's speed, you can get it done quick, relatively, especially if you're doing finish cuts. And this is what we're comparing, finish cuts to, let's say, EDM. So, or EDM finishing. So then you have the, the cost. So it's going to be a little faster and it's going to not cost as much unless you have high-end cutters and something goes bad. So that's where the cons come in, where you have, it's, it could be risky based on what it is that you're cutting, shut off, or some very tight tolerance. Your programs might be very long and, and, and you may have spent a lot of time to verify them, which I always recommend uh, in the 3D simulators with the software that you have, and then just being super cautious about it. So you get, you're running with high-end cutters that are expensive, and if you do that, they usually last a lot, lot longer than you know your cheaper style cutters. But that's what you got to use if you're trying to hit numbers. And we're trying to make a comparison between whether we do, whether we have EDM finish or we're going to try to hard cut, hard mill it. Okay, so now let's compare uh, EDM burning, um, the pros and cons versus hard milling or finish milling. Um, for the pros would be you, you make electrodes and check them. It's like another, it's like a, a, a dextra level of checking and quality before that before you do the burning. Uh, it's They're unattended when you're cutting electrodes. Typically, if you have a setup like we do, you make a ton of programs and there's typically not a lot of problems when you're cutting electrodes. So it's unattended. And then the sinker, once you've checked the electrodes and you set up your setup well, they're gonna, it's going to burn, and it could burn all night. It could burn unattended, um, with with little worry most of the time. So the cons is overall it might be slower, and and depending on your EDM, it may or may not be slower. But this is one of the cons. And then you have there might be another setup, so you're setting it up in an additional machine to get that burning done, and then sometimes it's it's more it's less cost effective, so it's going to cost a little more to do it that way. And sometimes you have to because of the features that are in, in the details that, that you're potentially burning. So that's that's my take on, on what the pros and cons are for both. And it's good to have both options, but I, th these are just my opinions and my experience, so. All right, this brings us to the end of our episode of To Burn or Not To Burn. And always remember, if you don't have wire EDM and sinker EDM in your shop, it makes sense to cut as much as you can. Uh, obviously, you want to keep the cost down, you want to get the job done. And if you're outsourcing that stuff, then, then you get with those people and, and decide what's the best way to go and approach that from both their perspective and yours. And like I said, this is, this is my perspective. Um, so it's always good to have a different, different perspective on things and having your eyes open to a, a different way of doing it or thinking about it. Uh, remember to subscribe and like, and if you have comments and uh, questions um, about my, my crazy theories, then uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to hear them. So thanks again, and we'll see you next time for episode seven, and we're gonna dive deeper into some more wire EDM. Okay, so I'm, this draw, yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Zero Tolerance. Uh, shoot. <laughs> Welcome back to Zero Tolerance for episode. <laughs> I want to bring us to the end of the episode and we're going to start that again real quick. <laughs>